Hey, what's up guys? This is Meathead Mikkel from MeatheadGaming.com and today I'm going to show you guys an Act 3 Torment 6 run. Um, I'm going to basically go over things really quickly and then I'll talk more about it as I'm doing the run. And just real briefly, this is not the most efficient way to get XP or anything like that, but a lot of people are having you know, problems in T4 and up. And this is a build that, it's, it, that works. You know, once you get to a certain gear threshold, and it's pretty fun. So this is kind of a proof of concept. So let's go over my skills real quick. So I'm using I'm gonna be using Magic Missile Glacial Spike for the freeze. I'm gonna be using like Arcane Orb uh, just for AOE damage. It's my main damage skill. Uh, magic Weapon Force Weapon. Now I switched from if you guys watched any of my previous videos, I switched from Energy Armor to Storm Armor with Power of the Storm so that I can spam more Arcane Orbs. This allows me to spam about 8 before I run out. If I was using energy armor, I can only hit about 6, and I will run out of AP very quickly. On a slow time, I'm using Point of No Return because of the stun. So you're going to have a bunch of bubbles everywhere, and enemies that come and leave are going to get stunned all left and right, and you have to have that on the higher tournament difficulties, otherwise you're just not going to be able to... Uh, DPS through the damage output, and then I also have mirror images that you know they're going to cast at the slow time as well. And a lot of people who've tried similar builds like this, they use mocking demise, uh, where you know they last a little bit less, they have less hit points, but then they explode for AOE damage and they stun, but they explode too quickly. And I need the bubbles and them up for much longer because of the glacial spike that they cast. I actually end up getting more CC doing this. A lot of people also use um, Illusionist as a passive for this, but I'm not because you know I don't really care for the movement speed that much, but most of the time I'm not taking 15% damage in one second. So the cooldown part of it doesn't actually work that well. Um, But, you know, it's it's still a good skill to use, and maybe at some point I will use it. Right now I'm using Astral Presence instead because I need the Arcane Power and our AP regen. I'm using Cold Blooded for extra damage without the downside of Glass Cannon, and I'm using Blur for overall damage reduction. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, gear that I'm using, it's mostly Legacy gear. You know, this is, this is Legacy. This is Legacy, Legacy, Legacy. This is a newer Hellfire Ring that I crafted. It's an awful craft. Um, the only thing I got out of it was attack speed, which I don't really care for. But it did give me a lot of toughness over the previous uh, one that I was using from Legacy. So this is a newer one. I hope to have a replacement fairly soon. This is Legacy, Legacy. These are new crafted ones. Cold skill damage is pretty good. And these are new gloves. You can't, it's really hard to say no to 300 vitality. And this is also crafted. It took me a while to get this chest, but this is very close to perfect for the primary rolls. And this is a rolled amulet that I used for Legacy. New crafted shoulders, again, very good. Very, very good. But you're not going to get a lot better than this. And this is Legacy Crit Nempo. So. Um, Hellfire Rings, I'm only using it because of the stats. I actually need to replace both rings because on Torment 6, you're not, it only adds the flat 35%, as you can see. So it's not really worth it for the XP boost. Um, Templar is nothing special. <clears throat> you know, I did find a couple items that will survive longer. I got a new Storm Shield and a new Eye of that Lake, which together give me 30% reduction to ranged attacks, melee attacks, and elite damage. Uh, just a crappy Odin Sun. And just to have them survive a little bit longer, but none of this is actually necessary. You can use rares, you'll be just fine. But I'm using them for the AP regen. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And I'll kind of explain the route. I'm going to start with Keep Depths 2. And basically, what we're going to do here is just cast these guys and just spam. Spam all day. And one thing I want to point out about this build is 
I'm not using <clears throat> any legendaries that actually change the builds at all. You know, the builds are still... Like, you, you can use regular gear. You, you know, if you have lower damage output... Then by the way, you can't really kill the goblins yet, not enough damage output. But, if you have gear with lower damage output, you'll still be able to do this. It's just going to take you way longer, you're not going to want to. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not geared enough for this myself. Um, this is just kind of a proof of concept to show that I can do it, but this is not efficient for XP. I did a little bit of testing on this off stream, and it the XP that I was getting per hour is only like in the 300 to 400 range, whereas when I was running T5, uh, solo or in group, I was getting close to you know somewhere between 600 to 700 more per hour. XP. So this is not going to be, you know, until you gear up enough for this, um, this isn't your, this isn't going to be your XP baby. Unless you have a group of people who are also well geared and you can roll through this pretty quickly. But so here's here's an elite that we're fighting on T6. These guys have ridiculous hit points, <clears throat> and this is not easy. And if I was if I was to continue doing this, I would do this on um, in Act One. If I was going to do Torment Six, I'd probably do the Cathedral Realms, where the mobs have a lot less hit points and the mobs in general are a lot less dangerous. Basically, the idea uh, behind this build is you cast mirror images every time they're up because it's free damage. They're going to pop bubbles everywhere. And they're basically, for all intents and purposes, they're basically going to tank for you. And then you save your own bubble for later if you absolutely need it for some reason. But their bubble will actually last and for the you know for the full duration until you can recast them again, which is nice. Now I'm using the what I call the stun bubble. Because every time enemies leave or enter the wall, they get stunned right here. And if you have, I don't know if you guys will be able to notice, because uh, these guys are dead, but maybe later on in the run, what I found out is if you have overlapping bubbles like this, every time an enemy comes to you, they will get stunned. So if you have your mirror images in like a choke point, and you all cast time warp, then everyone's, then they have multiple chain stuns. And again, this is a build that anyone can do right now. It doesn't require uh, any gear that you're either going to be lucky or unlucky uh, to not find. You, know, you could do this using regular gear. And this is really just scratching the surface because once you find something like frost burns, which <clears throat> you know, give your chill effects a chance to freeze, um, or like winter flurry offhand, which uh, if I remember correctly, it has a chance for any sun to cast a Frost Nova. You're going to be getting CC all over the place. So there you go, so I got Vortex. Instant, instant death. So yeah, you still have to be very careful with this. But... The point is... That this is doable, and I'm sure I'm going to show you guys in this video that it is possible. Uh, I'm still dying a bunch. I still have kind of crappy gear uh, in terms of what's required for T6, but hey, it's not impossible. You know, we've only been in 2.0 a few days, so again, you know, once once I find frost burns or winter flurry or both. You're going to have freezes and frost nobles and just permanent crowd control of some sort at all times. And now imagine doing all that, but then with another weapon, maybe like a one-handed weapon that blinds or something. You know, some other form of CC. You can basically take mobs out of commission entirely. And the reason that you need to do this is because on... The higher torments that have so many hit points 
that you're not going to be able to burn them down fast. You know, on Torment 1, you don't have to worry about this. You can you can kill elites with one hit. You can cast a Meteor and kill elites with one hit on Torment 1. I've actually uh, done that, and if you look at my other videos, you will see that. The elites on Torment 1 get one shot. This isn't Torment 1. This is Torment 6. This is the highest difficulty right now. And, you know, not a lot of people are able to solo it, especially in Act 3. Now, I'm not going to do the entire Act 3. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys to death with that. I'm not going to do Asmodan. Uh, honestly, Asmodan's a pain in the ass. He has way too many hit points. It's just, it's not... It's not a reasonable fight, and there's no reason to do it. He's not going to drop. He doesn't have some crazy legendary drop rate or anything like that. And the XP that you get for killing him isn't really worth it either. So, in choke points like this, they're actually your friend in a lot of cases because you can just print the stun lock mobs. So just keep casting your images every time they come up. And I'm just going to run this uh, to the wall. And then we're going to pop into Rackus Crossing. You know, this is, this is the same XP run that I do in other tournament difficulties that you basically just want to do in whatever the highest tournament difficulty you can um, efficiently. This is not efficient by any means. You know, and if, if I had, if there were three other players that I could group with who had similar stats, you know, mill toughness, somewhere around 300k DPS, or like a pole monk, you know, two other decent players, then it would be a lot more efficient. And I think within a week's time, we will be farming this um, as a group on T6 for XP. But as it stands, there's there's such a huge difference between T5 and T6 that it's not worth it. And it's actually such a big difference that once I farm a little bit more, I may make another video. I'm not sure if I'll even keep this exact same build or not. But I'll make another video just about XP farming. Uh, solo XP farming and how much you can get, and it's not going to be a T6 because this is horribly inefficient for XP. It's still good doing key depths to and rack is crossing backwards. Uh, I'll still net over 100 mil XP, but it, it's not, it, it takes too long, it takes way too long. And you know, there's situations where you're going to die. So you see right there, enter the bubble, stun, 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 stun. Just permanent stun lock. Get more bubbles. I actually don't know how to do Torment 6 without it. Because... I would not be able to survive. And this is kind of just like a proof of concept build again. And just to show that it's doable. I don't think this is not like a world first or anything. I'm sure there are people who have already beating Diablo on Torment 6, possibly solo. But I'm not trying to get a world record here, I'm just trying to... trying to progress through the game. And... honestly, I'm surprised that... I was able to... get to Torment 6. Uh, I'm gonna die again. Get to Torment 6... this quickly. And this is tough, you know, I've already died twice, and in the testing that I've done so far, that's been my experience. It's, it's going to happen uh, until you gear up properly, but it's doable. And some of that also has to do with, you know, me just not being as good of a player as I can be. If I was a better player, some of these things wouldn't be happening. And especially in these higher torment difficulties when you're kind of like on that bleeding edge 
of you know, barely being able to handle difficulty, that's where player skill really comes in, because you can't just sit here and mash a button and, you know, eat popcorn. It, it's more involved than that. This is engaging gameplay. And this is fun, and it's going to be even more fun once we find one of those uh, promised little changing legendaries. So there you go, loot down. But, no. Yeah, it takes forever and a day. Not worth it. So, that's where we are. I'm going to go ahead and pop into Rackus Crossing. You guys kind of get the idea. I'm not going to do a full run. But you would basically clear all of Keep Deaths too, And then do Rackus Crossing backwards. I would strongly advise against doing the Fields of Slaughter um, because, well, for two reasons. One, the density is not as good, and two, you're going to run into a lot more of those winged Moloch's, the dragons. And if we run into a loop, one of those here, uh, you're going to see exactly how uh, annoying they are and how long it takes to kill them and how it's completely not worth it. So from an efficiency standpoint, even on you know lower tournament difficulty where you're not dying, because um, the way those monsters are designed, they're going to be all over the place. So it's going to be very hard to focus damage, and there's going to be you know, balls of fire flying everywhere. So it's just you're going to take a lot more damage than necessary, and it's going to take you a lot longer to kill. I mean, even with these guys, you know this is. This is forever and a day, and that's a that's spamming a pretty high damage skill that hits multiple times at three almost 350k DPS. In addition to hidden DPS, which is 10% damage from mirror images, and um, you know the 10% from the cold blood passive. So there's some hidden DPS in there as well, and it still takes a long time. With groups because of how well groups synergize with each other and you know group buffs that affect other players, it's significantly faster. But you need to have other players you know, be kind of on the same gear level as you in order to be able to do it efficiently. So I don't know if we're going to run into dragons on this run, but even if we don't, just take my word for it you don't want to deal with them. They're real bad. Real bad. White mobs, on the other hand, are easy peasy. They just get stunned, you put them in a choke, and you know, it's it's GG. You don't have to worry about a thing. But looks like someone found a triumvirate. Which is not that good at all. And again, guys, this is a combination of Legacy Gear and New Gear. And unfortunately, the damage rolls in a lot of New Gear sucks. But I'm also not using anything that's too busted. You know, there are a lot of wizards out there right now that are doing the non-stop New Gear spamming. And, you know, their, their paper DPS is lower. A lot lower, around 200k, but those are the CM that are C. Um, Crit Mass Wizards from Diablo 1.0 who have really high AP on crit items. And, you know, it's fun to play with that now, but if you guys don't know, AP on crit takes a huge nerf in the 2.0, so you're not going to be able to spam those items or those uh, spells. Nearly as much once you get newer gear. So let's see, we're gonna hit an elite here sooner or later. But you know, as you can see, the regular mobs are not a problem. It's the elites that'll give you a little bit of trouble, but that's why you have all the stun locking. And you can you can do a lot of things with the stun locking. You can add the blizzard that freezes to your rotation. You can add the comet that freezes to your rotation. You can use 
mocking demise on the mirror images. You, know, you can do a lightning spec um, and then have your images or the lightning spec with paralysis and then have your images cast all lightning spells and stun that way. You know, while you're using frost burns and like some cold damage weapon or something. You know, so you can stack different kinds of <clears throat> crowd control. And have a pretty crazy build. I've seen a lot of insane builds. Um, they're kind of based around mirror images, and a lot of them also based around illusions. And by the way, so now that we're into this lead, this this is going to be the thing that kills you. Thunderstorm is going to be what kills you in Torment 6. Nothing else. You've got to be Johnny on the spot about avoiding the thunderstorms. Because it'll pop you quick. Like with this, I don't even know. I need to basically go in and out. Because that thunderstorm damage is insane. And it's very, very difficult to avoid it. And if you just straight up don't have the toughness to handle it, uh, you will die. I've died many times to it. And I'm, with my gear level, I'm basically on the edge right now. With being able to handle it. So, again, guys, this is proof of concept. Uh, be on the lookout. There will be another, there will be a lot more videos. But there will definitely be another video uh, talking about you know this build and optimizing it once I gear up a little bit more because this has the potential to be extremely powerful. It's just that I just literally the other day geared up sufficiently to be able to do this with any kind of uh, regularity or consistency. I guess is the word. You know, I still die. But I think with a couple, a little legendary or two, and you know, some maybe replacing my rings, maybe replacing a couple other legacy items um, to get more toughness, then I'll be okay. But this, the thunderstorm is absolutely horrendous. It will destroy you. It will wreck your day. And I think players are finding that out now, but that's, that's the one affix that is the worst affix in the game now, because of how much damage it does. Until players get enough lightning resist or something that reduces lightning damage, I know Thunder God's Vigor has rolls up to 200 lightning resist on it, which I think is going to be... A very useful item, a very desired item, because of the lightning resist. So I'm going to show you guys on this next pack why the skill selection is so important. Because you have <clears throat> your mirror images are going to freeze every time they cast Glacial Spike the first time. But that's, you know, two mirror images and you. So that's three freezes. Plus stuns from the slow time. Plus a slow from the Arcane Lord. So let's, uh, let's find a pack here. Let's see how, how much they stun. So that's some, that's some pretty decent freezing and stun locking right there. And that's absolutely crucial for you to be able to stand there in DPS. And the reason the Frozen Orb is so good, besides the fact that it hits multiple targets, is that you can stutter step, so you can cast step, cast step, cast step, cast step, which you're going to have to kite. So anyway guys, that's that's the end of the run. I didn't clear the entire keep depths too, but I didn't want to make this video too long, so you can see that it's doable. It takes some gear. So gear up, find find those legendaries, craft those rares, and I will be making another video hopefully sooner than later. Uh, 
about a much more efficient run with no deaths and things like that. So thanks again. This is Mikhail from headgaming.com. And let me know what you guys think about the video, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.